I am committed to improving the quality of life for the over 50 group in Barbados. Many of our members have years of experience and tremendous expertise in a wide range of professions and industries. In fact, they cover the whole gamut of industries, even in the public service. That expertise to date is largely untapped. And given the state of the economy, these highly qualified, knowledgeable, and responsible persons uh, have a most valuable role to play, and they can be a very valuable resource pool for the wider community. As a result, we're in the process of updating our information database with the skills, interests, and areas of expertise of our members so that we can market their skills to provide extra source of income for them, as well as to use their skills in our ongoing projects. Some of the projects, for example, include advocacy and lobbying at many levels, governmental level, corporate level, community level, to fight against discrimination and stereotyping of the elderly and to address issues, both social and economic, that affect, that affect not only BAP members, but also the nation as a whole. In fact, you will find that many of BAP's programs, and I'm committed to continuing this pattern, are geared towards helping BAP members, making life better for BAP members, improving the quality of life, maintaining their quality of life. But all that we do affects the wider community as well. So although our main purpose is to improve the quality of life, improve the quality of life, sorry, for BAP members, the nation as a whole can benefit from the activities of a significant amount of BARP members who um, who invested in Clico and BARP itself has invested in Clico and Bico. And we've spoken about this already. We, we are not happy with the with terms as outlined by the judicial managers presently. We're expecting them to really go back and review that and give us better terms, especially since we've heard that it's possible that it can be done better. And we're looking forward to any administration that is in there to look after the 35,000 members of BARP and 35,000 members of, of CLECO who invested in CLECO. Um, so we are waiting, we are, we are waiting, this is a new dispensation, we are waiting to see what they are, what they are doing about it. It is new. As Ed mentioned, we have 35,000 plus members, so that gives us a very strong voice. Lobbying and advocacy are part and parcel of BAP. And because the elections have passed here, that doesn't mean that we're going to slacken on the proposals that we had submitted. We're going to keep fighting for them because they affect our members and the over 50 population at large. You know, BAP primarily was a volunteer organization. Mm -hmm. It's still largely very much so a volunteer organization. So if you go to Cunis, Cunis Hospital, their group, there's some 35, 40 bar volunteers who were at QBH at the yeah, entrance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's a desk there, and, they, and they, their primary function is to help people coming into the hospital find, locate where yes. we're supposed to go, make sure the appointments are right, and they, they do that. That's another group. Then there's another group that goes visit all the geriatric hospitals and the, and the homes, mm -hmm. and, and they, do, they do that. Um, in, in, I don't, I know, I've done many boys, but Supercenter, has a group of bar people who are in the supermarket who also help people find the aisles and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'll, there's there's still a lot of people who do this thing who want to be volunteers, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the, the point that Alice is making is that there's a tremendous amount of talent in bar. I mean, if you look at any, our committees, mm -hmm. you will see that these are more a lot of them are people who are occupy top positions, either in industry or government or something. Um, and there's a lot more of that talent out there that we hope to utilize effectively into, to turn them into real project people who can go consultants. and do, consultants who can go and work on projects for people uh, at, at, at an affordable cost. Mm -hmm. So that's something we're looking at as well. You know, there's a lot of talk about innovation and entrepreneurship. and. Uh, Given the state of the economy, that is one show we, not sure, but that's one avenue that young people can look at for generating their own jobs, providing themselves with an income. But where they have a major challenge is they cannot afford access to professionals. 
highly skilled people who can help them do Guide business them. development, Man. organizational development, marketing. They need mentors. And that is one of the areas that we are hoping that we can um, help to identify the need mm -hmm. and um, help to fill that need. Because since, since they are retired persons who want to give back, we're not saying they should provide their services for no fee. Uh, I think they should in order that the companies they're working with realize the benefit of what they're getting. But so that these companies, especially young companies, young startups, can afford professional help and help of the highest caliber. Because this weekend, um, we have seen several comments on the need for retirement planning, not just the need for facilities for older persons, but there is no reason why a person's standard of living should deteriorate, deteriorate substantially on retirement. Many people either underestimate the amount and type of resources that are required for their retirement. In some cases, some persons are just unable to plan adequate, adequately or plan at all for their retirement. Um, given the economy, it's getting harder and harder for people to plan as they should for retirement. So we are at the moment taking part in and encouraging the conduct of retirement planning sessions which target persons from an early age to and to impress on them the need for retirement planning not just from the financial aspect, but also with regard to health, housing, living arrangements. What are you going to do when you get to a certain age? What are you going to do if you get very ill? Who are you going to live with? All of these things need to be considered now, not at the time that they occur. We know that NCDs are prevalent, and Barbados is thought to have one of the highest death rates in the Caribbean from um, diabetes or... It is stroke, heart, stroke. And from heart and stroke. Um, problems. So we need to have people look at their health and retirement planning includes taking care of your health at this stage early in life because the better you take care of your health or you pay attention to making sure you age gracefully or age healthily, the less will be the burden on both yourselves, family and friends uh, when you get to that point in life where you're ready to retire. Um, because that's almost a crime against the elderly as well. Because here's a facility that is placed close to a shopping area or something to facilitate people who are dif differently able, not only the elderly, mm -hmm. because these people drive into uh, handicapped parking spaces as well. Oh, I know. And, and, I, and, and, you, and you see them sitting there, you get a, a young person you can, mm -hmm. uh, in his 20s or 30s, and, and, and park in these facilities and, and go inside the supermarket or wherever. Mm -hmm. And then the person who really needs the, 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 the facility got to park somewhere where and you see them struggling with the, the, the carrot or struggling walking with the walkers trying to get to the, to the supermarket or wherever it is. So we feel very strongly about this and we feel that the government needs to, first of all, enact legislation that would more require people who are, who are either senior citizens or Differently able to have a sticker on the car that would indicate that their legitimate um, rights to, got legitimate rights to park, and then um, ensure that if anyone is in there without that that sort of uh, identification, that the, the 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 security guards at the company or the police or whoever can take action against those persons who are illegally parked the provision of tax incentives and any other such concessions to facilitate the establishment and operation of assisted living facilities for all the persons in Barbados. Um, this is very topical at the moment. The papers this week mentioned granny dumping, um, which I think is a very apt term. <laughs> and the, the long and the short of it is that there is a pressing need for a facility for all the persons or facilities for older persons in Barbados for daycare as well as more long-term permanent care. You want to address anything on that, Ed? This, as, you, as you know, we have, we have started the process of, of um, building, not, not building, but we started the process of looking at the possibility of building assisted care facilities and long-term care facilities on the property we have in St. Philip. Uh, we have now received the topographical survey 
and we, the, the planning committee is now hard at work uh, funded, looking to fund this this um, this project that we are having and it has become more and more necessary now as we see what's happening in the hospitals. There really is a need for additional care facilities for the elderly in Barbados. Where is this in St. Charles again? Six cro uh, it's crossroads, six crossroads. Mm -hmm. We will form partnerships with any person that, that is pursuing um, any any ideals that are, are that that we are pursuing. In other words, if they they can contribute to us and we can contribute to them, what what a, a, a colleague of mine refers to as smart partnerships, we'd be keen to, to get into smart partnerships with any anyone who has similar ideals as Bar. This is such a pressing need within the society that it's not something that we're taking lightly and we are prepared to consider partnering with any any organization that may have ideas for partner, partnering with us to make sure that this comes about because the idea is to make this a model facility something that others can look at and decide that it's something worth copying we will never be able to house or provide a service to all of the people who need it, not even to all of our members because we have such a large membership. So we want to, we're taking our time with it to be sure that it's planned properly, that it's planned optimally, so that it will be a model facility on which others can, that others can copy for constructing similar facilities for the elderly. Yeah, people, any person who brings a person, they will bring them with the intention that they'll be staying for a short, maybe a short period or, or, or a longer period. The daycare care facility will be a different experience altogether. We're to bring people in the mornings and pick them back on the evenings. I'm not sure what caused the, well, I, I know it's happened, I'm not sure why it happened because I would have felt if you're bringing someone, you got to leave your name, your, your address, your phone number, how you could be located. I don't know what problems that QEH had, the way they were not able to use, use that information that they must, surely must have to get people to um, think about we don't I don't I don't anticipate that as being a problem because most people got um senior citizens homes mm -hmm. and they're not experiencing that problem. Uh not as far as I'm aware. I think so, one of the reasons the hospital is experiencing it is because it's it a government, government facility yeah. and it's seen that the government owes them something. I think with a private facility, while it's not out of the realm of possibility that it could happen, but I think the chances of it happening are much smaller. Much smaller, yeah.